Welcome to Alaska, prepping for Alaska with a vehicle that will make it through the winter at negative 30, 40, 50, 60 degrees, and you'll live to tell about it. There's Izzy the watchdog and Valentine the pregnant cat. Winterization in Alaska is something that you're going to have to do for your vehicle. This F-350 1999 with 150,000 miles on it is ready to go for the winter here. We've been working on it uh, for the last five years, um, just every year, just doing improvements. And she's um, an oldie. We use it for hauling firewood and stuff like that. So she didn't get a whole lot of use. Our other vehicles um, get a lot more use, and the winterization is utilized when we go to town. Obviously, when we're here at home, we park in the garage. So this F-350 really is the one that we spend the most time and energy on because she's outside and when we need her to start, it's usually uh, super cold and she has been cold soaked, which means that it has been nonstop night and day cold outside. So the metal is really, really cold. So one of the, one of the first things you'll notice here is the electrical cord and that is connected to many different things here. So inside, uh, the engine compartment is a four-way plug. Uh, this one actually is a three-way plug. No, I do have four. Okay, excuse me. So I've got a um, battery trickle charger, which is, in my opinion, much better than a blanket heater for batteries. And then I've got all this horrible wiring here. Please don't, uh, don't uh, annihilate me, you guys who know YouTube better than I do. I've, I've got a bunch of work I need to do on my electrical system, um, mainly a fuse. Um, but anyway, that goes all to my LED lights on the front for the moose uh, lights. But the winterization is not difficult. This here is the box that then runs to the block heater, which then runs to the oil pan heater, which then runs to the trickle charger for the battery. And the oil pan heater is also connected. There's the oil pan heater right there. And then there's the transmission heater. And the wiring is just very carefully uh, strapped to things that are away from the belt. And the block heater is pretty much the most difficult thing to install. If it's an older vehicle like this, you have to break a freeze plug and drain some fluid. Some of the newer vehicles, they just slide right into the engine or they come to Alaska from the factory uh, most American models come pre-assembled. So winterization is a huge deal if you do not have a plug coming out your front and if you have not tested it uh, then you're going to be in for a surprise at negative 20. The car will not start. The oil uh, is uh, needing to be just warmed a little bit. The block heaters need to be warmed a little bit and then that engine will start. Without all those precautions and if you do not have a plug near your vehicle, your vehicle will not start and you will be late for work or unable to keep a vehicle very long because it just is tremendously hard to start a vehicle when it's cold. All the oil is not lubricating the pistons, the starter is working overtime, the battery is working overtime, you'll get all kinds of corrosion uh, starting because your battery is just being taxed to its ultimate cold cranking amps. So if you're looking at buying a new vehicle or used, definitely make sure to test and check the winterization. Put your, plug it in, put your hand on those things gently that are underneath, make sure that they're hot, and make sure the battery trickle charger is what I suggest. It's much better than a, a pad heater. The trickle charger actually charges the battery and then that produces heat uh, versus a pad just warms up the battery, does not produce electricity in it. So that is step one for winterization of a vehicle in Alaska interior Fairbanks. Step two is the cold weather front that you see here. This cold weather front, when it's warm outside, you can unzip this thing and allow some heat in. And, um, but during the cold, you definitely want to keep it zipped up. And that is allowing the engine to keep all that extra heat, especially to the transmission. That's the most important. And, uh, I would definitely not go to Alaska Tent and Tarp. I would go to Fairbanks Custom Canvas run by Devlin McKee. 
and ask for him. Tell him Adam Porter sent you. Um, he will make you the best canvas uh, cover at a very affordable price to uh, to your vehicle. Here, I got two buttons that I need to strap on here. I need to do that later. But so a canvas covers the front of of a uh, SUV or a car or a truck in particular, especially a diesel, and allows out all that extra heat as you're driving at negative 30. That wind chill then turns into what negative 90, 75. It, it, it's exponentially more, and your car really will just be cold inside the cab. So one of the things you want to do is have a cold front. Now LED light, moose lights. You know a lot of people that live out far like I do out in the out in the sticks. The LED uh, light is super super nice on on the country roads. Obviously when you get onto a freeway and other vehicles are coming. You need to turn those off. You're going to blind everybody. And in some parts of the world, uh, they're strictly illegal. So check your local regu regulations. And like all video disclaimers, everything I'm telling you is just entertainment value. If you catch your car on fire by installing your winterization wrong, um, I'm, I'm just here telling you what I've done. I'm not making any professional recommendations. So the next step for a winterization in Fairbanks, Alaska is having studded tires, uh, which is, I just found these super inexpensive from a friend that needed some money. So I bought those and they were a really great deal. But my particular favorite is not the studded tires. These things wear out over time. Um, they make noise all the time. I've never really liked that. And uh, so my favorite is the studless tire, which Izzy is very carefully guarding here. Blizzak makes an incredible studless tire, and it's made by Bridgestone, and they are called Blizzaks, and they're kind of hard to spell, but um, Blizzak is what we have used for years and years and years, and uh, where is the Blizzak name? Studless. Hmm, that's funny. I can't find them. They do not have a stud, and that compound is like a really super soft tennis shoe that even here with our very first snow that we're getting uh, is super soft. If I go over and touch the other vehicle's tires that are the studded tires, they're a soft compound, but not as soft. And so, you're, you're, yeah, look at that. That is just a massive difference. I cannot move that traction at all. So winterization in Alaska also includes just having a whole bunch of safety stuff on hand. I have towing straps in here. I have jump cables in the back of the vehicle. I have all kinds of safety jackets uh, that you just slowly collect over time so that you can have uh, instant protection. If you get in a wreck or you come upon somebody who's hit a moose and is in a wreck, I came across somebody at negative 20 everybody sat in their car and did absolutely nothing and i jumped out through one of those jackets that i collected over time and threw it on this guy that was in a wreck trapped in his car uh, ambulance got there super fast put a heater on him but it was shocking just how many people just just could not give a rip about somebody who's in a wreck maybe the guy passed them and was just super super obnoxious and they were like well you get what you did you drive you know, like that, and of course you're going to get in a wreck. But nevertheless, it was surprising to uh, see that happen. But anyway, so if you yourself need um, warmth or you see someone else, you always want to carry extra stuff. One thing I did forget was just you want to make sure that that antifreeze is tested to negative 50. Um, and so what that will do, you'll have a little specific gravity tester. And just make sure that that is a fresh antifreeze that's good. If it's an older vehicle like this 2005 Endeavor, you want to test it. You want to see if it's got a good antifreeze or not. So let's shut that and we'll move on to the next thing. So we jumped on inside here real quick. I, I should, before I get into the oil here, um, I really, I only stayed out there for 9 minutes and 30 seconds. And my hands are absolutely frozen. So that's my mistake. Um, with part of winterization in Alaska, you always want to make sure to have just a good pair of gloves kicking around, um, some thicker uh, insulated gloves, um, some hat, 
um, flashlight. All that stuff needs to just stay in the car. Don't uh, skimp on quality for gloves in particular. Um, I've met people while we go down and do a bunch of homeless outreach and street preaching in Fairbanks. We often, and I mean often, it is painfully often, meet people that have lost fingers. Um, homeless people uh, would rather live outside than get off alcohol and substance abuse and live just sexually crazy lives. Um, they um, live outside instead of going to the homeless shelter at 30, 40, 50 below, and they lose all kinds of appendages. So make sure not to be the same uh, stubbornness. Buy the best you can get a hold of, of hats, gloves. Keep them. If you lose them, just uh, bite the bullet and replace them. Okay, so back to vehicles. The synthetic oil is pretty much the only uh, route that I go. Supertech is pretty good. I don't know who's making that for Walmart right now. When I first started uh, using Supertech, it was made by Mobile One or something like that. I, I really can't remember. It's it's uh, I need to research that and I'll put that in a little blib. But only use synthetic, uh, synthetic blend or synthetic oil. If you use just regular conventional oil, um, you're going to be in for a real thick, soupy uh, surprise that's going to just take a lot of time to uh, warm up. Uh, this is for just a weed eater, but it's obviously a non-synthetic oil. This oil at negative 20 will look like molasses. It will just pour super, super slow versus synthetic at, even at negative 50, 60 will look like it's been inside this, uh, like this garage is like 80 degrees in here. I got the fire going. Uh, and it, it will pour is just like what you want inside your engine. It will move around and do the lubrication. That's what oil does. So winterization in Alaska is very doable. If you can afford an inside garage, um, please use it. It is amazing how many of my friends have lived in Alaska for 15, 20 years and they do not use their garage. They, they park outside, they plug in. Um, Golden Valley Electric really appreciates that. They, they make tons of money off people that slack on that. But uh, if you can afford parking inside and um, keep your kids from drawing artwork. No, I'm, I, I gave them the chalk. This is pretty cute. They're making all kinds of artwork. Uh, park inside. Keep your, uh, keep your vehicle inside. Keep it warm. We really like to keep uh, uh, a drain plug in ours that we built this house just like this. The guy that helped us put the concrete in it really insisted that we do that, and boy, am I glad we did. But anyway, winterization of a vehicle really makes it uh, pleasant to live here. Uh, also, during the spring and fall, make sure to get some red heat. Red heat uh, will take the moisture out of a vehicle, especially if you're parking it inside, driving to work, it getting cold soaked all day, and then you bring it back into a warm environment, that condensation will really show itself in your fuel and your vehicle will start acting funny, your tires will start acting funny. So really make sure to put red heat in and uh, check uh, your tire gauge every once in a while and fill your tires up. I'm trying to show you a picture of the air compressor there. Uh, especially in the spring and the fall. Now once you get into the middle of the winter, uh, things kind of stabilize. The colder it gets, it actually works better for you. So it's not that big of a deal for your tires. But anyway, I hope this is helpful. I'm thinking I missed something here, so I'm going to push pause before I move on. Okay, I did. A lot of newer vehicles are moving to electric power steering. Uh, but if you have a Ford in particular, make sure to use synthetic uh, either transmission fluid or synthetic power steering fluid. Fords are really famous for not doing well in cold weather for power steering. You break a hose and then you've got really rough uh, steering. Also your gear oil, use synthetic. W what you're trying to do is just keep everything from uh, just turning into molasses and at colder temperatures and without synthetic fluids it will do that. It'll just take time for it to warm up and it will wear out your gears that much f faster, your power steering that much faster. Um, we really make a habit out of changing the oil on a very regular basis uh, before 5,000 miles, you know, like 4,500. And what that does is just keeps every system going, lubricated well. 
Um, it's a huge part of prevention. We've never broken down so far uh, at, at cold temps. So um, keep uh, the tools that you need for changing.